This is sorghum. And it is covered in aphids. Let's see if we can see some. Right there. They're all over the place. But also look what's right there too. Honeybees. This sorghum is teeming with life. There's probably at least four species of wasp, wasp-like insects, flies, all different kinds of bugs. And definitely there's honeybees on here. And what they're doing is they're collecting honeydew. Tons of bugs are on the on this uh, this stand of sorghum. This is called coral sorghum because of how much sugar is being produced by this plant through photosynthesis. That it is a uh, chain. It's a food web, basically in and of itself. There's probably, I'd say, at least 10 to 15 different species of insects that are just thriving on this plant. Now, a lot of people would say, well, those insects are, they're all negative, or most of them are negative. Uh, we don't want to have anything that's going to be a pest that we're harboring. But my ultimate plan for this plant is to chop and drop so that we can have lots of biomass and from mulch in case we can't get wood mulch. So if you look at this, look at all the tillering going on over here. So there's a few different stalks coming up from one plant off the same root system. And as this plant is growing, it's just producing tons of biomass. So if I can't get a hold of wood chips, this is my plan to be able to feed the soil and cover the soil. And these stalks, I think, take a little while to break down, sort of like uh, corn. So when considering whether to grow sorghum to make sorghum syrup or whether to have honeybees, let me suggest that honeybees actually can get some honeydew from the sorghum. Now you may not want to make honey with honeydew, but we're in a dearth right now. Even though it has rained, it's just not the time of the year where we're going to have a lot of flowers. And so the bees don't have much to go to, but they are getting something from this plant. Another plant that they get stuff from at a certain time of the year, later in the year, is the live oak trees, which actually have a wasp gall. And I have seen them all over the live oak trees in our area collecting honeydew. And they make a dark honey usually out of honeydew from what I've seen. Uh, I learned about that actually from a book that Nathan at Duck River Honey suggested that you can download for free online. And it talked about honeydew being um, in some areas a really desirable honey so it's all beauty in the eye of the beholder but I've seen ladybugs on this plant so my hope is that we're gonna have some sort of an equilibrium where the other insects are actually taking care of the aphids but the aphids are focused on this plant so I'm not really real worried about the other plants in the garden being affected too much by this. And this plant doesn't really seem to mind too much. It's looking pretty healthy. We'll see how it goes. At the end of the season though, the growing uh, cycle or, or growing time for this crop, it can also produce flowers. And those flowers I've seen online 
can actually be another source of maybe nectar or pollen or both for honeybees. So just an interesting idea, food for thought, lots of biomass in this plant. Here's another variety of sorghum that I'm growing and this one is actually for grain and it doesn't have all the tillering, those other stalks that the coral sorghum is growing. I believe this one's called Dorado. And this thing is just teeming with honeybees and other insects. So if they make comb from this honeydew, I'm totally fine with that. I'd rather have the honeybees have something to do anyways, rather than just feeding them sugar syrup and having them not do a whole lot. And then here's a, a wasp 